Nelson. So, I have a little story. I was at a bar much like this with my nephew. And I was having a piss poor day. Because uh, I don't know if you realize it, but every so often I have a terrible case of body dysmorphia. <laughs> Most of those guys sound like whiners to me. I'm sorry to say, I know it's a real thing and I don't really, but the story has to start somewhere. <laughs> so uh, I'm just having a rough day and I'm just complaining about all the things like I can't hold a mic when I'm trying to do stand-up. And all, it's just getting miserable and I can't, you know, every time I get a new bike I have to go through all these adjustments and try to get it to fit me and oh, life is terrible. And my nephew haven't heard me go through this before and normally I have a great attitude so he tried to bring up some of that old crap. <laughs> He's like, well, think of the privileges you get. Like people open doors for you and people are really nice to you and man, it's really great sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> He's like, now think of this. Now, I don't want anybody to get any ideas. I'm not begging for this. But he said, when, uh, I bet he could go up to any person at this bar and bully the shit out of them, and nothing would happen. Nothing. He's like, that guy right over there, I saw him punch a guy and knock him out just because that guy got shoved into him. Go, go try it. Go do something mean. So I went over there with my beer, and I tried to pour it on his face, but my arms are short, so I just splashed down his front. <laughs> and uh, that was not good. And uh, he, he just stopped. And he looked at me, and he looked at his shirt, and he looked at me again, and he goes, Aw, oh, dude, you dropped your beard. Let me get you another one. I said, come on. This is my point. And I was about ready to headbutt him, because that's all I got. <laughs> And my nephew pulled me out of there, ran off, and, and, and like it didn't help at all. Like I was just in that mood, and so finally, when he was getting me home, and I was ready to just pass out anyway, he goes, "You know what? I promise you, Uncle. If there was any way, I would, I would get your arms. I would trade arms for you. I'd give you my arms." I was like, "What?" Well, uh, I blacked out, and that's all I remembered of that night. But I did some homework. I did a lot of homework, and I looked around, and it turns out they've been doing full arm transplants. Like, uh, it's a sad story, because it's the darn war in Afghanistan. They've got so many patients to practice, you know, it's, like I said, it's a sad story. But it works out in my favor, and so uh, I went ahead, and we went and got the paperwork done. I have four nephews now that are old enough to sign the organ donation card, and I'm all set. It's going to go great. Now the other thing I have to uh, confess tonight is that uh, I've been grooming my nephew. Not like that. <laughs> I'm saying that whenever I say, I bet you can't, he will try whatever comes after that. So, you know, I bet you can't jump over that thing. I bet you can't do a double backflip. I bet you, he'll try it anyway. So uh, we're out there uh, in Othello, Washington, Eastern Washington, and they have this really great little place called uh, Potholes. And uh, basically what it is, is it's a series of cliffs. There's, at one part of it, you, there's a series of cliffs that you can hike up the back of, and you get to the front, and you look down over, and there's water at the bottom. And, I, and so this was, my, this was my thing. This was my training in progress. I said, I bet you can't jump over those rocks into the water. And uh, he did. And he missed. Oh, man, he missed. And uh, thankfully, he didn't hurt his arms because he had crossed them like this. Uh, probably because I had him in a straight jacket. <laughs> so uh, here, here he goes down on his back, and he misses, and he hits the rocks head on, and uh, bashes. You know, like it's he's broken. So uh, I get the life flight in there to see if they possibly can, and thankfully, uh, because that's step one. Uh, maybe that's step three. I can't remember where I was. I'm not that evil of a scientist. Um, but anyway, uh, the doctor took his body in and saw all the paperwork, and he goes, this is weird, but it's legit, it, you know, it's legal, you've done the paperwork, so 
Oh, it was great. I got these arms. I got his arms, and and I had him on for a little while, and it, you know, it took like a year of therapy before I could even start using because it, it it's so much. There's so much that goes on. His arms' immune system is trying to attack me. My immune system is trying to attack the arms. The nerve needs to grow from my body and connect to his nerves before I could wiggle my fingers and things like that. But once I got all that worked out, the real problem started. I tried to brush my hair. And I scalped myself. I push so much harder than I normally can. Uh, now this one's a, a little awkward to kind of explain, but another big problem for me was my penis shrunk. <laughs> like compared to these hands, his hands were huge, and my penis was tiny. It was no, it was bad. It was bad. You gotta get a dick joke in an open heart, right? Yeah. So. There, that's it. That's uh, that's all. I'm good now. Uh, and then uh, the other thing you have to get in at open mic is uh, I ripped myself a new one when I finally realized I could wipe because I can't reach right now and you don't get to know how I normally do it. But with a real hand, uh, it was bad. <laughs> I pushed way too hard. So uh, now the the worst thing was the psychology parts. Like when I walk into a room. I'm used to like people looking and like, oh my gosh, what is he doing? What is what's with that? What's going on? You know, like, is, how's he going to eat with a fork? How's he going to eat with chopsticks? How's he going to, you know, how did he get here? How did he wash his hair? You know, all these questions. And I, I'm used to just kind of being a bit of a show off, you know, like a, like an item when I walk in the door. And uh, all of a sudden, with normal arms, nobody saw me. And sure enough, I was in the back and I got pushed into a guy. And he decked me immediately. It was the same guy. He just decked me, knocked me out. I woke up in the hospital, and my doctor was there, happened to check on me right as I was waking up. And he goes, oh, good, you're awake. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, so how's it going with the new arms? And I was like, terrible, it's the worst. And he goes, well, I have good news. I thought something like this might happen. So uh, I kept your arms. And he opened a drawer, and there they were. He'd been keeping my arms. I mean, there's not any blood supply going to them anyway. There's the, the, so as you can tell, they're back on. They look really good. You can't even see any scars. It's pretty great to be myself again. Right? I'm here. I'm fine back. Yes. I miss my nephew, though. Thanks, <laughs> Seth. I'm here. <laughs>